It will be my pleasure to take you on a tour of a fascinating land where amazing opportunities await you. My name is Cordell Anderson. Along with my wife and family, we have lived for quite a few years in the land you are about to see, where we are representatives of an exciting organization, the Foundation for Indian Development. Our work is centered in, in the Central American country of Guatemala, known to many as the land of the Mayas. It is a beautiful land of tropical, lowland coastal plains and cool mountain plateaus ringed with ominous volcanoes and other scenic treasures. Dominant culture dispersed throughout the picturesque highlands, but Guatemala is a land of profound and sometimes tragic contrasts. In the clean modern cities live conquerors who dominate the country politically, educationally, and economically. But even in the cities where most residents enjoy our modern world, one cannot easily ignore the majority group, the Indians, who live frustratingly in stark contrast to the Latinos. They were and in many respects are still needed and an exploited people. Most of the Indians live scattered across nation of people within a nation, but are in many ways a divided people, split into 19 different dialect groups, each with their own costumes and customs. But there is another side to this story that eludes many visitors. It was shockingly described recently by Miss Indian Guatemala when her acceptance speech emotionally said, We are seemingly happy and a colorful people, but our beautiful clothing and colorful ways are nothing but a disguise for our misery and We are still a exploited and despised people, but the day has come when this must stop and justice must be done. So frustration, discouragement, and all too frequently attempts to escape the realities of their life. Most have lost forever all hope of ever making any progress, much less do any of them dream of once again regaining the stunning greatness achieved by their noble ancestors. In their scattered condition, they live a life of poverty with a per capita income of under $75 per year. Their homes are usually less than animal quality shelters. Their diet adds to the problem producing physical and medicine infant mortality rate that swells to over 60,000 deaths yearly in a country only one half as large as the state of Utah. Most of the Indians do not own the land they subsist on. Ignorance of improved methods, lack of capital to work and purchase land with, and increased land values in a circle of non-production, poverty, idleness, frustration, and vice. And so life goes on much as it did centuries ago. But does it have to be this way? The Foundation for Indian Development believes, because of its many years of first-hand experience among the rural Indians, 
that the potential is still present and it can be awakened. The Foundation's objective, therefore, is the establishment of simple, efficient, economical, and self-perpetuating programs of total development in which we train and prepare Indians to help their own people and then aid them to manage and continually expand their own business enterprises and aid programs. The Foundation and its donors' efforts to form a partnership with the Indians and achieve together these objectives are spreading rapidly but are best demonstrated on the Valparaiso Plantation located in North Central Guatemala that you are seeing here. This is the first area where all aspects of the total development program now are functioned effectively in a project owned and managed by the Indians themselves. In the beginning, work with poultry, hogs, beef, and dairy cattle, and many more things in accordance with the most up-to-date modern methods. learn to install electric transmission lines throughout the area and work together to construct a safe water system for the entire Valparaiso community. They have also worked together over the years building simple but healthy homes where they now all live happily and rear their children in a healthy environment. Valparaiso is growing, and so there continuously are new homes under construction, making possible each year accepting new Indians who are interested in progressing and aiding their own people. student group was the driving force behind the establishment of the only modern dairy in this area of the country. This involved clearing land, planting of improved pasture grasses, many, many miles of fencing, the building of modern dairy facilities, which included a water system and a diesel generating plant, and also techniques such as artificial insemination, and of course the establishment of markets for their products. Another important development by the group has been the establishment of poultry projects, which include laying hens of several different breeds, and also a growing number of chicken coops in which eating chickens are reared, which are thereafter slot. They are retailed in their own commercial outlet in the nearby city of Tolan. The groundwork was also laid for many other projects, such as fish farming, for which project two large ponds have now been constructed. The initial pond has served for daily swimming and boating recreation, as well as for fishing, which has provided a fun-filled source of high-quality protein. It also serves as a source of breeding fish for family fish ponds throughout the area, and for the new lake you see here being constructed and which will serve as a high volume production pond of prolific vegetarian varieties of fish that have proven effective through foundation experimentation over the years. Here you are seeing the Indian group constructing the drain system for the new lake. And here you see the bulldozer beginning to construct the earth fill dam. A little bit further along you will see this pond being filled for the first time. However, you will not see the pond completely filled as these movies were made uh, prior to the lake filling completely.
uh, we have lost the sound um, on this uh, old uh, eight millimeter movie and so uh, for the next uh, few minutes I, I will try and fill in uh, with some kind of explanation. Uh, we are seeing the, the second lake on the Valparaiso plantation that is now filling up. Um, here we are approaching the, uh, the crossroads uh, where for many years we had the sign, the SID number one um, Center for Indian Development. And, and here we're getting a panoramic view of uh, of the plantation. We saw the central house here on the left and here we're seeing an area now in vegetable gardening that originally was in sugarcane fields. Um, and now we're moving uh, to uh, the dairy area. We're seeing the homes that were built for the work dairy workers and now we will zero in on the dairy uh, uh, but we have moved quickly to the uh, young ladies uh, that live in the central house um, who are working on preparing food, uh, sorting uh, black beans actually. That's what they were doing. Now Julie here is seen, uh, she apparently is down uh, for the summer as uh, she had gone to the United States to study when she was 16, uh, but here she is for the summer uh, helping at Valparaiso, and apparently there is some kind of a, uh, uh, of, a of a lunch being served to everybody. I don't know exactly what the occasion might have been, uh, but uh, there you can see her serving all the uh, the children uh, and the young people. Uh, we'll see if we can. There's Danny. I uh, have to see if we can't uh, determine what is going on here. I, I think you saw Joe there too. Uh, but the uh, these tables uh, are where they're eating uh, is in the what we call the cultural hall. Um, we are all of a sudden uh, on an excursion, apparently, uh, to the uh, to the lake of San Cristobal de uh, We're seeing the the Plymouth van uh, that was purchased by the foundation for us on our first trip to the United States. Uh, uh, that would have been in 1974. Uh, uh, we were told by the foundation that if we could get to the United States they would see that we had a vehicle uh, to, to be able to return and so uh, me and all the children uh, I think there were seven of us at the time Julie had gone already uh, but uh, I sold a bunch of old cows and and we bought uh, tickets and got on this big 747 Pan American jet and all went to the United States uh, there are 34 people that got out of the vehicle of the, the van uh, on this particular occasion uh, uh, the teacher was with them. Angelica was the teacher at the time, the one at least on that excursion. She was one of the several teachers that we had. Uh, here we are seeing um, the children um, in some kind of, uh, of a project there. Uh, and now we've skipped over to the uh, uh, to uh, Florencia and uh, Maria treating a very, very sick child uh, that was brought to us uh, with all kinds of skin infection and all kinds of uh, malnourishment problems. Uh, uh, and so there you see all the things that we are using to uh, to treat this uh, very sick child. Um, with the electrolyte uh, replacement fluids and... Uh, man, I can't remember what, what might have been. Okay, now we are uh, on a trip, of, if I recall, this must be uh, uh, going up very, very rough road to the Pambach plantation where we had been invited to help um, build their school. They uh, 
uh, had been doing it uh, and got to a point uh, with the help of Federico Bellis, who was their teacher at the time. Uh, but they needed help to, to continue. And so here in this little Suzuki uh, Jeep, uh, I am hauling uh, bags of cement up to the end of the road. Um, and there we would be met by the men from Pambach who would carry the uh, bags of cement and sand and gravel because there were just none of those materials available in the Pambach area. Uh, but they would haul them uh, on up over the pass and down into Pambach uh, on their backs, of course, as you will, you will, you will see. Uh, here we were going through the Pambach plantation which um, on the first trip uh, through there, I was stopped by the owner and he tried to pull his gun on me and my uh, traveling companion, Pablo Chonat, thought sure I was gonna get killed, but, but uh, the owner, uh, as I was getting out of the car, was trying to pull his gun, uh, but he couldn't get it out of the holster. He was just totally frustrated. He couldn't draw on me. <laughs> And then he, uh, I introduced myself, and he remembered who I was, and and he just told us we could make uh, one trip through the, his plantation. But from then on, no going through his plantation, and so we had to start making uh, long trips, long hikes, hauling materials uh, um, uh, up to get to the Pambach uh, village uh, by by passing the Pambach plantation. Uh, but here we must be up on the pass. Uh, well, uh, there the car is, and so we're not on the pass. Um, we're just seeing the countryside. Okay, now now we're <laughs> quickly moved to another area. We're at the Tanchi village in San Pedro Carcha, where we had a student, uh, Felix Rosales, and also Miguel Chub just all of a sudden appeared, wanted to be students at Valparaiso. And so here we are, uh, Miguel Mush was with me on the trip, uh, talking to uh, Felix Rosales's father and, and family. Uh, now we have jumped to uh, my group of students and uh, uh, every day we had a little physical training and so here they are doing their 100 yard dash. Uh, uh, so Lorenzo and Mariano and uh, all of Domingo and Mateo, I should have started naming them all from the beginning. And that's uh, Clemente and uh, Mecanismo uh, and uh, Miguel Tull and uh, Ricardo Cho. Um, and I, I can't remember the names of all of them. Um, I think that's Domingo Paul, uh, but they were uh, students. And of course I would uh, do it, and I was uh, for many years the fastest uh, out of everybody on the plantation. Uh, Lorenzo just happened to be the first one to finally beat me. Uh, eventually I think a Neville did too. Uh, here Florencia is in a Relief Society uh, class meeting. Um, teaching them about the invisible monsters called microbes which cause infection, stink, rot, etc. And here we are showing them with a microscope. Of course we grew them in petri dishes too. This is the only way we finally were able to convince them that these little invisible monsters actually existed. Um, here they are being served uh, probably some kind of nutritious uh, food, uh, uh, showing them how to prepare different types of nutritious food and giving them samples. And uh, I guess here the women are after the meeting. Uh, Matilda there is uh, serving them uh, something to drink. Here we are with a group of the, the students. Um, uh, this was a time when uh, we had a, 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 a an employee from the Department of Agriculture that actually lived with us for nine months and taught a nine-month course in horticulture to all of our young men. Uh, this is Miguel Chub, who is the one in charge uh, of, this, of the project from the plantation. And so here the, uh, the students are working in all of these uh, plantings of 
that were done under the supervision of this uh, teacher from the Department of Agriculture. And here, uh, here we are bringing in some of the harvest, which was then uh, distributed and shared with everybody. Uh, here is the uh, construction of what was going to be a, a typical cultural hall with a big thatched roof that we would uh, then uh, rent for example for meetings on Sunday and use uh, and it would, was also to be a, a museum and uh, and and for all kinds of social activities uh, but we were told that uh, that it would not be rented <laughs> the rent would not be paid and so we got discouraged and so that foundation I guess probably still exists today uh, uh, but here we are working on, uh, this is probably the uh, potable water project. Um, for a short while we had a little uh, small bulldozer. Uh, uh, we finally had trouble keeping it running and uh, so I'm not really sure what happened to it. But, uh, uh, but here we are, um, well, let's see, where would we be? This is probably... Uh, on one of our trips into the jungles, um, into a, a village area where uh, I'm taking pictures of, of them uh, building a thatch roof using palm thatch. At Valparaiso, we didn't have palm thatch. Uh, the the um, those that still had thatch roofs, and all of them did it in the beginning, and uh, they all used sugar cane uh, leaves as the thatch. Yeah, but that only lasted uh, a, a year or two, and so they had to continually be replacing them. Here we are with our potable water uh, cistern um, being built. Uh, it goes down. Um, I'm not sure whether we see pictures here of of how deep it is, but it's uh, about nine, ten feet deep. Um, it had a capacity. Uh, if uh, I just off the top of my head, I remember it being somewhere like uh, 20,000 gallons, uh, probably more than that, but uh, here it is uh, covered. Now here is a, a very important person, uh, Sid uh, Jesse Frazier. Uh, uh, Sid Frazier, I believe is what he was called, when he was uh, uh, an all-conference uh, linebacker for BYU's 1966 championship team. Uh, one incredible guy that came and was with us for a while. And here he was teaching Carlos and uh, uh, David and uh, Richard uh, how to work with leather. Um, here Miguel Mash is uh, t t teaching uh, the young students how to treat a cow for, for what was called cow fever, I guess you call it that in English, uh, uh, fiebre de leche in Spanish, uh, but he is uh, showing how to uh, uh, give them the uh, medication that uh, in, 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 in its vein uh, uh, to uh, treat it for th this condition which uh, would have a cow just collapse uh, and die if not, uh, if not treated soon. Uh, here we're showing how we're teaching our young students to be cowboys, I guess. Uh, here we see our Toyota pickup truck, Land Cruiser pickup truck. They're starting it by rolling it backwards. Apparently we were having trouble getting it started at that time. And so they, they had to park it in a place where, um, where they could uh, roll it backwards to start it. And it worked apparently because it's still working. Um, here we see a, a chicken coop that was made just out of bamboo and it's being disinfected with a motorized sprayer. Also, a great deal of agricultural experimentation goes forward at the center. In this particular case, we are viewing several scenes showing Jerusalem artichokes being planted for the first time in the country. 
You also note that the school children also have opportunities each day of, of learning to work in animal and in uh, agricultural projects. Work either with metal or wood under the supervision of people like Hal Polson that you saw there working in the shop with a cutting torch. They are also given opportunity to work with some of the, our Indian experts in uh, brick masonry work. And the thing which seems to be of most interest to almost all of the Indian boys is learning to drive a vehicle. They first begin by being taught how to drive a tractor and using the farm implements and also uh, scrapers uh, for doing road work such as you see here. Here you see Felix Rosales who has gone back to his own area who is a 1974 graduate of the center whom we call Mecanismo. In addition to Felix, several others have returned to their home areas and uh, initiated foundation-sponsored projects. The project here in the center is under the direction of Miguel Mash, a 24-year-old Pocomchi Indian who is also the foundation's regional director in this area of the country. Here you see him with the student group uh, observing a cow that had just calved with twins. Uh, through him and the foundation promoters working under his supervision, projects are functioning and are being expanded as fast as capital becomes available. I think we are beginning to see that there is something effective that can be done to reverse the youth. Paradise Valley, Guatemala, the first foundation sponsored project in the country. We now travel four hours across the country to the central highland area of Patsun and Patsisiya, an area heavily damaged in the 1976 earthquake. The area's regional director is 24-year-old Center for Indian Development number one graduate Miguel Apop, who in addition to operating the simple dental medical clinic from his home, manages aid projects in four rural villages near Patsun, one near Tecpan, and several projects in the nearby Indian town of Patsisiya. All of these projects are designed to evolve into total development programs and centers for Indian development, all linked together in a continuously growing chain of complementary cooperative business enterprises in communities owned and managed by the Indians themselves. The village we are viewing here has progressed to the point of having a fully organized cooperative improvement association functioning. They, in partnership with the foundation, purchased a piece of land and have now constructed a native-style building called the Cultural Center, where educational and social activities are going forward. Under Miguel's supervision, they have also now taken the first legal steps to form an agricultural cooperative similar to the one in Valparaiso, and have established a cooperative store through a loan from the Valparaiso Credit Union. This group is quickly moving towards evolving a full-fledged center for Indian development, only lacking the capital needed to go forward. Foundations through giving technical guidance and supervision, we give grants to the various projects which we funnel through our regional directors and promoters who are either full-time or part-time foundation personnel. Financial aid for business development is handled on a loan basis through the Valparaiso Credit Union. 
After more than nine years of laying the groundwork and training people, we are now ready with the staff of Indian workers and the experience necessary to bring tangible, realistic, and self-perpetuating help to the growing group of rural Indians who are clamoring for progress. We are convinced that the most effective and the most economical method for bringing about the needed changes and development is through the system that has evolved, which basically is through the Indians themselves. All we need now for rapid expansion is the funding to be able to go to work. We feel enough confidence in the method and the personnel to guarantee that the results will border on the fantastic. Your generous partnership with the Foundation and the Guatemalan Indians will increasingly make it less necessary. Their colorful culture is nothing but a disguise for their misery and suffering. Misery and suffering that three times over kills as many Indian children each year as were killed in the tragic earthquake of 1976. In the words of one of our great religious leaders, they have asked for bread and received a stone, and have asked for fish and been given a serpent. A people who ask not for your distant, faraway sympathy, who raise themselves by their own bootstraps, call for assistance from those who can push and lift open doors. I point to you a people in whose veins flow the blood of prophets and martyrs, a people who have intelligence and capacity to climb to former heights, but who need vision and opportunity. Healthy, happy, self-sufficient Indians can evolve that will multiply our efforts by in turn showing compassion with their own people. If we will first show that we care by forming individually and collectively a partnership with them and open even wider the door that is now ajar. Many Indian groups are now clamoring for progress and seeking help, which they have faith our Indian staff can give from seeing how miraculously their lives have changed. The Foundation Indian representatives, promoters, and regional directors are more than capable now of giving their people a significant hand up if we will generously show that we care by responding liberally while there is still opportunity to help them climb to former heights.